second. All right, Mr. Ben Greenfield, welcome to the Happy Hustle Podcast, my brother. I'm super stoked to connect. I'm Carrie. Just out here happy hustling, I guess, now that I've added that phrase to my vernacular. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are, man. You are a happy hustler through and through. I mean, among happy hustling, you are a health consultant, a speaker, a New York Times bestselling author of 17 books, and you really embody what it means to be a happy hustler, prioritizing your family, your faith, your fitness. And, you know, man, I really appreciate you and, and what you stand for and how you show up in the world. But besides all those, you know, really interesting things that we're going to dive into, what is something interesting that not too many people know? About me or an interesting fact that not too many, many people know? About, like, about why you. The sky, why the sky is blue or the the actual foot per second of gravity, I, su I suppose, uh, or the fat things that people have forgotten. Uh, but as far as me, gosh, what do people not know about me? Gosh, I'm a creative romantic at heart. Like if I had all the free time in the world on my hands, I'd be basically like reading and writing fantasy fiction, you know, playing chess, playing the violin and guitar, doing some singing and songwriting. You know, that's, that's like my, my Sabbath days, my Sundays are the day where I do all the all the non-hardcore stuff I'm doing the rest of the week, you know, all the, all the foofy lovey dovey stuff. So I, I really am a romantic creative at heart. Like I'm happy as a clam. I, you know, like yesterday I wrote a song about, about love, you know, based on uh, first Corinthians 13 from the Bible about, you know, love bears all things, believe all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And, you know, I, I, uh, I enjoy just basically, uh, you know, appreciating the, the, the finer beauties of, creation via creativity so i think some people think i'm some kind of like a hardcore athlete or or uh i guess like perhaps excessively hustling ceo but i'm really just a i'm i'm a i'm a soft pushover <laughs> <laughs> i love it man i love it and and you know that kind of dovetails into what i, I want to discuss first which is your family life and specifically your relationship with your wife you know it seems like you guys have really built a sacred bond and i'm just you know wondering if you could dive into that you know maybe for the happy hustlers out there, I feel like a lot of people are sacrificing their love, their relationships, their inner circle for mm. success. And I've seen <laughs> you achieve success, at least, you know, for your business and um, also personally and professionally, you know, both ways. So what would you say has been the biggest catalyst into keeping your personal life and your professional life healthy and happy uh, throughout the process? You mean specific to marriage? Yes. Oh, well, you know, mom ain't happy and nobody happy. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not saying that, especially for the fellows out there that, that uh, your wife's got to wear the pants in the family, you know, man's got to be a leader in the family to prepare and, and provide for his family. But uh, at, the, at the same time, um, I don't know a lot of guys who could walk into a boardroom to, you know, set down for a multi-million dollar deal and have angst at home, especially with their wife or with their children. And despite all the money in the world being on the table, have their thoughts be on much else other than all the problems back home. It's very, very difficult to have any type of personal or professional success if you haven't first created uh, two foundations. First, a foundation of faith, and second, a foundation of family. It took me a long time to realize that because I thought you get your business all set up, you know, you put your own oxygen mask on so that you can then turn around and take care of your kids and take care of your wife and give them a good home and give them stability and, you know, and, and create a career to where you have the time to be present with them eventually, you know, so you put your nose to the grindstone early and, and keep your fingers crossed that at some point, you know, you're, you're going to have the time. And I, I got news for you. You know, your, your business will eat you alive. If that's your mentality, the work will mm. never stop. There will always be an excuse to, in a very noble sense, prepare and provide. And while that's necessary to a certain extent, well, men for all of time have, have gone out to fight battles, to slay dragons, right? It's, it's, we, we live in an era where, frankly, by the grace of God, you know, we actually have the ability to be able to have more time with our families. And that takes trust. It takes trust that when you're not working, when the money's not coming in, when you're not creating, when you're not producing, when you're not publishing, when you're not, you know, hustling, that things are still going to be okay, that you can take that break to be with your family. And so, when it comes to my wife and I, for example, we carve out intentional time. And by that, I mean, we carve out intentional date nights scheduled at the beginning of the month, typically one to two times uh, each month. And when I say date night, I mean date night. I mean, like, you know, go out at, at 5 p.m. to a restaurant, get a hotel, stay overnight, 
uh, you know, basically just have time to, to enjoy each other, each other's souls, each other's spirits, each other's minds, each other's hearts, each other's bodies. And we intentionally schedule that in because we know if we don't, it's unlikely to happen. We do the same thing on a quarterly basis. We go off for two to three days. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a staycation where we send the kids off and, and we're just at home. You know, you don't have to fly to some exotic locale. And sometimes we are going somewhere, you know, often, you know, rather than spending all the money on a plane flight to, you know, to, to the Bahamas or something like that, we'll just, you know, last, last time we just drove up to North Idaho and got like a nice little lodge up in North Idaho. And we lock ourselves away in a hotel room for two or three days. And we talk and we go on walks and we journal and we have a lot of eye contact and face-to-face -face meetings with no agenda aside from family planning and sharing all of our hopes and dreams and desires and frustrations mm. and honest, raw, vulnerable discussions with each other. And, and mm. so uh, that, that's another thing that that's on a, on a less frequent, but at least a quarterly basis. Every single night, last thing when our head hits the pillow, we pray together. And when you pray together, you share this spiritual bond that is, oh my gosh, so much stronger as a cord that binds than, than even a physical or a mental bond. And, you know, that's non-negotiable, you know, and the first few times you do it, if you're listening, first few times you do it with your spouse, it might feel kind of weird. It might feel kind of fabricated. It might feel kind of forced. And then eventually what happens is you begin to feel weird if you don't do it. You begin mm -hmm. to feel as though maybe you're spiritually disconnected if you don't do it. And so we, we definitely, uh, we, we go to God each night. And the thing is, like, it's hard to pray together if you've got issues between each other. You know, there's that Bible verse about never letting the sun go down on your anger. And gosh, that's all the more true with your spouse, especially because again, like you have to have that foundation of faith and family in the home for the rest of life to, to, to be smooth and magical. And so by the process of praying together, you'll find that a lot of times you'll start to pray and you'll be like, wait, babe, there's just something I got to talk to you about. You know, I, I was rude to you about, you know, you drinking all the coffee this morning or, you know, <laughs> that, that, that little argument we had right before dinner when I got home from work and I was flustered and I just didn't want to take care of that, that tent that you want me to put away in the garage. And I snapped at you and I'm sorry. And, and so you find yourself having those kind of discussions before you pray. Cause it feels kind of weird and almost like kind of dirty to go to God with, you know, with, with something still unsettled between the two of you. And so that, that prayer actually serves a, a lot of good means. And then a lot of the stuff we do, you know, it's out of family. We, we carve out every single night. We sacrifice a lot of stuff like, like sports and, and extracurriculars to make sure we have family dinner almost every night of the week. There's, there's one night where my sons have youth group and that's the night where my wife and I stay home. We have Scrabble night and game night where we just play games with each other. But all the other nights of the week, we, you know, 7 p.m., everybody drops everything. We gather in the kitchen. We sing songs. We, we say a prayer. We all make a meal together. We sit down. We play cards or play some kind of a board game for, gosh, like sometimes an hour or so as we're eating dinner. And then we finish dinner and we all clean up together. And uh, if, it's, if it's still light outside, we'll go outside and we'll play like cornhole or bocce ball or, or, or badminton or, you know, outdoor lawn game. And then we go upstairs and we read a story and I play my son's like a song and the guitar. And then we journal together and we pray and we get up in the morning, same thing. We have this coming together about 7.30 each morning where we all come together and we sit on the floor and we breathe and we do tapping and we do gratitude and we do meditation and we do prayer and, and we do journaling together. And that, that kind of bookends the day, meaning no matter what happens the rest of the day, even if we're like ships passing in the night, you know, we all come together at the beginning of the day and we all come together at the end of the day. And then we carve out these intentional retreats, these intentional dates, you know, in the same way that I carve out intentional dates with my wife, each of my sons, we have one-on-one -on -one dates at least once a month. Um, we have mm. getaways where it's, we getaways where it's just with my sons, like this next weekend, you know, my sons and I are hopping in the truck and we're going into the mountains to do it like a, a bow shooting competition, just me and the boys. And that's, that's important that the, that the father have some dedicated one-on-one -on -one time with his children as well or group time with his children. And so mm -hmm. a lot of this takes scheduling, it takes calendaring, it takes planning. But if you're intentional about it and you understand that that's actually more important than business, and it's, it's really odd, it's almost kind of paradoxical, the business seems to begin to take care of itself when you have all this energy and clear thinking patterns and, uh, and lack of stress because you don't have a bunch of angst on the home front with the mm -hmm. family and you also don't have a bunch of angst in your soul 
from a faith standpoint. When I say angst in your soul, I mean, like when I wake up in the morning, it's not physical fitness time, it's spiritual fitness time, right? When I wake up in the morning, I'm reading my Bible, I'm, I'm praying, I'm going to God, I'm sitting and listening to God, I'm, I'm, you know, burning incense and playing peaceful music and just taking that time to make sure that I care for the most important eternal part of myself first thing in the morning. And then I'm able to go on after that and, you know, hit the kettlebells and the weights and the barbell, everything else. But first comes the spirit, everything else follows after. So, so really, you know, it's a long, long answer to your question, but short answer to your question is put faith and family first, plan it intentionally. And the rest just kind of flows. Mm, love it, man. Wow. Well said. And yeah, intentionality is just the biggest takeaway for me, being very deliberate with how you schedule your time and prioritizing each of your family members, each of your inner circle individually, you know, and that that's really great to hear that bond is forged through that personal time, that one-on-one time. And yeah. That connection. Yeah. And, and if that goes over your head, you know, if you're, you know, if, if somebody's listening, they're like, gosh, you know, I, I do prioritize. Well, ask yourself this question. Okay. Ask yourself if, you know, let, let's say, let's say you're kind of struggling between like business and family and where you put your time. Would you rather lose all your money that you have in the bank and lose your entire business? Or would you rather lose your entire family? Like, and I'm not going to get all dark here, you know, or yeah. I'm not trying to be dark, but like, let's say, you know, both, you know, all, all your kids get in a car accident and die and your wife passes away from cancer, but you have all the money in the world, right? Which would you mm. rather have? And for most people, if they answer that question, then all of a sudden they're like, well, damn, if that's what I'd really have, my priorities don't reflect that, right? Like I'm spending maybe a half hour with my family when I am there, I'm not quite present. I'm kind of halfway on my phone or the TV, but when you realize, oh my gosh, like really when you step back, the, the thing that gives me the most love and satisfaction in my life is a family. And even if I'm living in a trailer home, you know, yeah. I, I, I know that, that I'll be the happiest with my family. And, you know, that's important too, because if you truly believe that, that your soul is going to go on and live in eternity, don't worry. You're going to have all of infinity to enjoy a whole bunch of, you know, great food and riches and wealth and everything else. But sometimes here, <laughs> here on, here on planet earth, it's a little bit of a marshmallow test. And you know, I'm not saying that, that, that wealth and good food and, and riches are bad. I'm just saying you want to make sure that you have your priorities set straight. And again, paradoxically, if you set your priorities straight, the wealth and the finances and the blessings seem to follow from that. If you place the wealth first, the business first, then what happens is, you lose the other stuff in life that's important and eventually your your life goes to pot you know you're some like you know i don't know divorced wealthy ceo who's depressed on a golf course somewhere <laughs> true where and I, I feel like you know there's uh, plenty of those out there and it's and it's really important to get that order you know of priority um very deliberate and making sure that you know, you're being disciplined with your time with your family and making sure that you're all there. That's something I'm very big on is, you know, that's life balance, both personally and professionally. And, you know, the happy hustlers out yeah. there know my framework, but just in terms of the yeah. business side, Ben, I'd like to dive in a little bit here. What, what is one thing, if you had to just look back on your whole journey in business and just look back to like the best piece of advice or the best thing that you've ever done for your business in order to achieve you know, the success that you have and created the massive following and the books and the, the podcast downloads and all the things, if you could just distill it into one actionable piece of advice or takeaway for everyone out there, what would that be? All right, I'm going to tell you, but, but before I do, I'm going to backpedal just briefly because there's one thing that, that we should definitely share based on this idea of priorities. And that's the, mm -hmm. the concept of how you live your day is how you live your life, right? Yep. And, and how you live your day and the way your priorities are set up during the day stacks you know every every day you should be asking yourself if i lived every day like this what would my life be like right yeah. where will i be in 10 years if i lived every day like this and i think one of the most powerful exercises that i have to share with people that again me and my family do each evening is self-examination it only takes yeah. three or four minutes you close your eyes you play your entire day like a movie in your mind and you ask yourself where was i most purpose-filled what did i do good today what did i fail at Mm. Uh, that's, what, that's what we journal. Where is the most purpose filled? Meaning that really helps you to identify those activities that, that really truly do reflect your priorities. Cause you'll know the things you're, that put you in the flow, that keep you happy, where you really feel like you're making an impact on this world with your unique skill set in life. You'll mm. find yourself writing those things down. And if you're not writing those things down then that reflects a need to adjust your day somehow. And then, you know, writing down what you did good is helpful. Writing down what you, what you might've failed at is also helpful to learn from the failures. But when it comes to setting priorities, I think one of the best exercises you can do is that nightly practice 
of self-examination. And so, mm. so just, just remember to do something like that. And then moving on to answer your question, I think, you know, there's, there's a book that's cheap or free on Amazon by Gary Keller called the one thing about this yep. concept of doing the one thing that you can really crush. And, you know, as a, as a guy who likes to dabble in a lot of stuff, and I'm intensely curious about a whole variety of subjects, I spent many years, you know, coding my own website sites, responding to all my customer support tickets, making phone calls to affiliates, uh, doing the accounting, um, you know, updating WordPress plug. I just, I was kind of proud of that. I was like, dude, I'm like a jack of all <laughs> trades, baby. I, I can do it all. Yeah. But, but what did God make me good at? Well, God made me good at, he made me good at storytelling, right? I like, honestly, when I sit down, I'll go through a process like, uh, probably the most updated, helpful process for identifying your, your best skills in life is there's a, a little ebook that I like, I recently discovered, and you know, I've read all sorts of purpose finding books, but this one's really good. It's called Ikigai 2.0. Mm. Uh, it's a download you can get from, uh, the, from slow.co, S L O W W.co. They do a lot of like good book reviews. And then picked up this book I went through with my sons last year, and it's a really, really good way to, to identify those things that you should really be spending the majority of your time on. And for, for me, it's, it's storytelling, right? It's writing, it's podcasting, it's speaking. Right. And, you know, and, and so if I can spend the majority of my time from a business standpoint, right, in terms of my business activities engaged in those three areas, then I'm doing the one thing that I can really crush. And then mm. I need to set aside my ego, set aside my pride and outsource as much as possible to an amazing team that I surround myself with, each of whom is also crushing it at their one thing. And so, yeah, now something breaks. I don't know how to fix it. I don't even know how to log into my own website. I don't know how to use social media. Like I take a photo. I don't even know how to, how to like do the photo thing on Instagram. I take a photo. I send it off to my social media team and I say, Hey, post this and do the, you know, say the stuff and do the comments and the hashtags. And, and so I've extricated myself from even being able to get involved in the micromanagement of business and that type of outsourcing, again, very similar to time spent with the family takes trust. It takes trust in people. It takes trust in God. But the, the, the idea of sticking to the one thing that you can crush it at, and then ruthlessly outsourcing everything else, I think is probably the best thing I've done for my own personal and business productivity. Yeah. Wow. I love that. That's phenomenal advice. Just getting crystal clear at what are your unique gifts and how can you exploit those in the service of others and then build a team around you to support yourself and your mission and your impact. And then essentially you can work on the business, not in the business. Right. And, and so yeah. I really, I, lo I love that advice, Ben, just in terms of I mean, I feel I, I would be remiss if we didn't go here. Anti-aging, nutrition, some of your favorite topics, I think. Um, what would you say if, you know, you had some happy hustlers out there listening and they wanted to extend the healthy human lifespan? What are some of the low-hanging fruit in terms of nutrition and anti-aging that you could recommend? All comes down to one word, really. Like if we're, if based on the amount of time we have, uh, one thing to focus on comes down to one word and that's electricity. Okay. Nikola Tesla uh, said that, you know, basically life comes down to energy waves and vibrations and, and that's really true. Meaning that when you're reading men's health magazine or women's health magazine, and you're hearing about like, you know, how to, how to eat your, your lean Turkey and your yogurt and how to go hit the dumbbells and the, and the gym and go to Zumba and jump on a trampoline or look, that's all great. Okay. Movement and eating healthy is foundational, but frankly, I don't think that's a newsflash for anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. But the, but where the magic happens, you know, and I'm, I'm 40, I literally feel like I'm 16 years old. I mean, like I have <laughs> slabs of muscle and 5% body fat. I can go for days. I can ruck with a hundred pounds on my back. I can, I can swim. I get, you know, and, and yeah, I'm not like racing triathlons and doing obstacle course races anymore, but like, I'm really happy about where I'm at in terms of how I feel when I get out of bed in the morning. And I do a lot of basically what might be considered like electrical medicine or electrical modalities. So, you know, if you read a book like The Body Electric by Robert Becker or Healing is Voltage by Jerry Tennant, you'll learn how the cells, each of your cells have a very precise electrochemical gradient across their membrane, a negatively charged interior of the cell and a positively charged exterior of the cell, meaning that your entire body really runs like a battery. And the number one thing that gets in the way of you having the energy that you want, the sleep that you want, the physical and mental performance that you want is this battery getting drained. Well, what kind of stuff drains the battery? You know, a lot of times it's anything that doesn't expose you to good electricity or that exposes you to the wrong kinds of electricity. So what drains the battery is like cell phones, Wi-Fi, 5G, Bluetooth, smart homes, 
um, not being outside in sunshine, getting photons of light, not being connected to the planet Earth, getting negative ions and the electrical conductivity of the planet Earth, not being in both cold and hot bodies of water, and, mm -hmm. and eventually your battery gets drained. So what do you do to refill it? Well, I think the most important things you can do, again, assuming that you're already moving and eating healthy, is first of all, have a really good grounding or earthing practice. Be outside barefoot or lying on your back in your backyard or in a park or touching rocks, touching trees every single day, get yourself exposed to the earth. Every mm. single day, try to get 20 minutes to two hours of natural sunlight, preferably as early in the day as possible because those photons of light are excitatory to these electrons that move throughout your body. And that would include also the use of biohacks like infrared saunas, infrared light panels, you know, this red light therapy type of concepts. So when it comes to grounding and earthing, same thing. It doesn't just have to be outside barefoot. It could be the use of grounding and earthing mats, the use of pulsed electromagnetic field technology, which are these mats you can lay on or, you know, in my case, sleep on. And so mm -hmm. you got earthing, grounding, you got sunlight, regularly getting yourself exposed to extremes of heat and extremes of cold. This really helps with the electron flow through the body. So that means a robust sauna practice, you know, mm -hmm. multiple times per week, 20 to 45 minutes of sauna, multiple times per week cold exposure you know i'm usually jumping in a cold body of water two times a day or taking a cold shower a couple times a day like there's mm -hmm. not a day that goes by where i don't go out of my way to experience a heat stress or a cold stress same and then and then the last thing would be water and minerals because this is how, how the charges get carried throughout your body so being super anal and picky about your water like really good clean pure filtered reverse osmosis or double block carbon filtered water, typically with really good minerals added back to it. There's all sorts of companies like Element or Protect or Tinton that have great trace minerals. You can add to your water, salting your food regularly with really, really good full spectrum salt, not table salt, but like really fancy salts like Celtic salt is really good, Florida cells, Kalima salt. And that's gonna allow you to carry charges through your body. I mean, I start and end each day with a giant mason, well, I don't end the day, typically mid-afternoon, so I don't have to get up at night to pee, but giant mason glass of water with mm -hmm. a pure and clean and filter. I put minerals in there. I'll put hydrogen in there. I'll put, you know, vitamin C and baking soda in there. So I'm usually using water to adjust my battery during the day. I tell you what, if you're already moving and eating healthy and you're able to get some kind of grounding or earthing your PEMF in regularly, sunlight exposure and red light therapy regularly, heat yep. therapy, cold thermogenesis, and then really good water that you're picky about and minerals, all of a sudden you're going to walk around with a fully charged battery. And that's, yeah. that's really where to start. I think from, you know, that, that beats all the stem cells and peptides and injections and IVs and everything else is to start with the battery component. Mm, absolute gold right there, Ben. I mean, y'all go back and listen to that. That was hot fire on the mic and uh you know all those things that you're naming i was deep down the biohacking rabbit hole for many years and you know i really do believe less is more oftentimes so there's a lot of people who are over biohacking and i feel like getting back to some of those foundational elements making sure you're getting good water sunlight you know sleep making sure you're you know charging your battery up really being intentional with how you use technology not letting it use you all really important components to just achieving optimal health and happy hustling a life that you love. Now, Ben, I do want to run you through the rapid fire round. This is where we just ask you random questions and you answer honestly, the first uh, thing that comes to mind. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, these are always dangerous. Okay. <laughs> all right. Favorite food, go. Ribeye steak. Favorite movie. Oh, geez. I don't watch movies, bro. Um, <laughs> gosh. Now, now, now I'm going to have to dig, but I would say I'm going to go with the most favorite recent movie that I watched. And uh, it was um, it, it was uh, it was a, it was like a mystery movie, like Knives Out or something like that. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, I see I, it. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a yep. mystery with, with Daryl, uh, not Daryl, uh, the guy who played James Bond. Anyways, yeah. So I'm yeah. a dummy with Hollywood. So keep going. Yeah, that was good. Um, favorite workout. Go. Uh, just a, a basic Russian kettlebell workout, kettlebell swings with pushups, rounds. That's it. Boom. Easy. Love it. Favorite biohack. Uh, red light therapy in the sauna, you know, followed by a cold plunge. That's like almost daily for me. Favorite book. 
Oh my gosh. Okay. So we're going to say that we're, there's like when people ask you like what superhero or, or celebrity yeah. you'd rather be with at the dinner table. It's like, well, I could say Jesus, but he's a given. So <laughs> let me move on to like Theodore Roosevelt or something. Same thing with the book question. I'm like the Bible, but that's a given. So, yeah. um, you know, I'm a bookworm. I read one book about every one to two days. Uh, so I'm just going to tell you, I'll give you three, uh, poor Charlie's Almanac, Almanac by Charlie Munger really mm. good for mental, mental models and, and cognitive biases in humans. Um, yep. st- I think stillness is the key by Ryan holiday is a little bit underrated, but it's a fantastic mm. book that I think a lot of people in our, in our busy world need to read. Yep. And I would say, gosh, there's so many, but, uh, I would say, um, the last one, I'm just going to go with a recent one that I read that I think is really, really good for people who just want to accomplish a lot in life no they can't but need god's help to do it and that one's called moving mountains by john eldridge Mm, love it best business advice well i mean we've already established outsourcing but i would say uh, uh, a second piece of business advice would be uh embrace the fact that most good productive creative impactful things that you do occur early in the day not later in the day go to bed early get up early crush the day Mm, love it. Best money advice. Uh, live with the spirit of abundance, not scarcity. Okay. So when you go on vacation with your family, don't spend all the money on plane flights and hotel and get there and be like, Oh, we can't enjoy the restaurants, the activities now. Like life is about experiences. You don't want to die with a bunch of money in the bank. So, you know, set up a family trust, get some whole life insurance policies and put some paid up additions into them. So you have a family bank, uh, make sure that, that you set up really good wealth protection and insurance and then figure out how much money you need to live on, live on that amount, and then just basically give away the rest in a spirit of abundance. And uh, that's, if everybody did that, this world would be a much happier and, and more uh, fairly, dis- fair, fair place from a wealth distribution standpoint. Mm, love it. What's your spirit animal? Gray wolf. Oh, good one. Three things you're most grateful for. My wife my children, and my home. Mm, Love it. And if you had one billboard for the world to see with your last piece of content, what's that billboard read, Ben? Trust God. Mm, Love it. Crush that rapid fire round, Ben. That was awesome. Uh, You know, I had a couple shots of whiskey before the call. That always helps. (laughs) Yeah, it does, right? Ben, where can people go to find out more about you and anything, you know, I know you got a ton of awesome content on your website and your podcasts and your books, but is there anything specific that you want to, you know, recommend for the happy hustlers or drive people to? Oh gosh, you know, I'm, I'm working on a new parenting book right now. Uh, you can, you can find out more about that at boundlessparentingbooks.com. And then everything else is at a bengreenfieldlife.com. And I'm usually I'm like Ben Greenfield or Ben Greenfield life or whatever on social media, but uh, we've also established, I don't really know that very well. So just Google, I guess, or <laughs> duck, 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 go, or ask Jeeves or whatever. Yep. Awesome, brother. And man, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you for just sharing your love, your light, your wisdom with myself and the happy hustlers, man. And just for showing up authentically you and just putting good vibes out there, you know, sharing your faith, your family, your fitness, and what's working in your life. And also what's not, I know you're very transparent and and you keep it real. And I appreciate that about you, man. So I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you. Thanks. And thanks for not naming your podcast, the depressed doers. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's a that's a good antonym to happy hustlers. I love it. Ben, appreciate yeah. you, bro. Last question. What does happy hustling mean to you? Oh, happy hustling means, I mean, again, back to like that last question you asked me, you know, trusting God, releasing, turning everything and everyone in, into the hands of Jesus, then just sitting back and you know, chop wood, carry water, enjoy your blessings at the end of the day, and appreciate the ride. Mm, love it mic drop ben greenfield y'all thanks for watching and listening we are out peace and love later bro love it dude that was awesome thank you man i appreciate you and i'll send you